all you mystery buffs and meddling kids. I'm Pammy Chanel, and today we're going to be diving into the mysterious community of Gloria Vale. Gloria Vale is a fundamentalist, aka Fuddy, community located in New Zealand. I watched a three-part documentary on Amazon Prime, you know, because being stuck, sick, working from home, you know, it can lead you into watching some crazy stuff. Then I got really nosy, and I decided I need to look into them a little bit more. I'm breaking this down into a few videos. Today's video will just give you a brief history and overview of the community, and then I'll break it um, down each episode and cover some of their controversies in later videos. So let's get into it. Gloriaville was started in 1969 by Neville Cooper, aka Hopeful Christian, and we'll talk about those horrible names later. He was born in Australia and became a traveling preacher. He survived a plane crash and decided to do the Lord's work by creating this God-fearing community. The community was named Gloria Vale after his deceased wife, Gloria, and Cooper himself would go on to meet his maker in 2018. Now, his followers are in some ways the typical fundamentalist Christians like the Duggars. About 500 to 600 people live in the community. The leaders make most of the decisions, including what items to buy for the community by praying and seeking God. Yes, even down to the smallest item, they will, the, the shepherds of the community get together, pray about it, and whatever God decides is what they do. They all wear blue, even the men, but this is not because of some type of Christian book saying that blue is a special color. This is for economical purposes. All of the women there make the clothes. Women cover their hair as signs of submission. Submission is a word constantly used in the documentary. This is a very patriotic society. The men make all the decisions and the women and children obey. When I say the men make all the decisions, when we get into the episode about having children, the man decides whether or not the woman needs to go off to the hospital. It's crazy. They live in what I can only describe as a dorm or dorm rooms. Each family is assigned a room based upon the amount of children that they have. For example, a family of 12 may have two bedrooms, which I have a lot of questions about marital relations. Like if kids are in the room, how do you get it on? They also have a kitchenette in each dorm along with two to three bathrooms for all families. And when I say two to three bathrooms, I mean, think of a dorm. You have maybe one bathroom on each hall. That's how this is. And there's not just one dorm. There are like several different dorms on the property. Everything in Gloriaville is focused on the community. They eat meals together in a big banquet hall. The women are assigned different duties each day, including preparing the meals, laundry, or teaching. And you're going to, to we're gonna talk about a girl named Dove Love, and you're gonna see her. This girl works like a slave. One minute she's in the kitchen preparing food with other young girls. The next minute you see her doing a whole bunch of laundry. It, you see her painting, it, it's ridiculous. The men work at the many businesses the community owns. Children are educated a whole lot better than the Duggar children are educated, by the way. Um, they're educated based to New Zealand standards. However, they're taught creation. And I don't think those type of things belong in a classroom, but that's not my issue. They are also taught based on their gender roles. So girls are taught math with the expectation of them working in the kitchen or sewing. So of course, when you're talking about working in kitchens, you're talking about heavy emphasis on measurements and, you know, sewing, you want to, you know, is another thing where you're looking at measurements and, and different types of geometry. And while the boys are taught math based on working on the farms and the factories. Speaking of work and money, this community is worth about $36.6 million. I'm going to say it again. They're worth about $36.6 million. Think of your top CEOs in America. 
And the reason why they're worth this much amount of money is because they own so many businesses, including a dairy farm, a deer farm, a sheep farm. They have a place where you can go trophy hunting. They're manufacturing garden, um, gardening goods um, such as moss. They sell this moss to Disneyland, y'all. My happy place. Mm. They also have a, an airplane business called Air West Coast. Now, they're able to have this much money because all of the employees are from the community and no one takes home a paycheck. All money is placed in a community chest, even the midwives that deliver the babies in the community. If you watch the documentary, you're going to see two midwives. They are highly sought out outside of the Gloriaville community. So within New Zealand, people want them to deliver their babies. So that's a pretty much overview of the community. There are a lot of things I did not include in this video because I want to break it down, like I said, episode by episode. And I also want to be able to just dive into the scandals. The scandals in this community is a video by itself. So I didn't want to give you guys too much. Anyway, I highly suggest you guys go and watch the documentary. Go be nosy. Until then, um, my next video, we're going to talk about Paul and Pearl Bowler. They are the stars of the first episode of the documentary. And I have never seen a bride look so uninterested than maybe myself in my first marriage. So until then, guys, stay meddling and stay being nosy kids.